Okay, in this video we're going to use Revit conceptual massing to model what we see here, which is Fernando Romero's uh, new museum in Mexico City. So what we're going to do is we're going to load in a JPEG that has some plans that we're going to trace over here in Revit. So we'll need to go to level one and these plans are going to be in meters so we have to change our units to be meters and we can do that from the manage tab and we can go to project units and we're going to set under our length format we're going to click on that button and we're going to set that to meters and that'll be good for these settings and we'll go ahead and insert our image so I can do that from the insert tab and click on image. It's going to tell me that the imported image will not be visible in projects and that's fine. So we'll browse for our image. Okay, and we're just going to place it anywhere for now. And this will come in, and it will not be to scale. So we're going to zoom in to this level 1, the plan that's labeled level 1. And we're going to go ahead, and we're going to use these double doors as a reference for our scale. So we're going to say that the opening for this, these double doors is 2 meters. So I'm going to just click on my screen, which will select my image. I'm going to go up to the ribbon and click on Scale or Resize. And I'm going to pick the left side of the door. And I'm going to pick a horizontal line to the right side of the door. And my new reference or my new dimension for that opening is going to be 2 meters. So I can type in 2, Enter. And that scales up my plan. So that's good let's go with that and I'm gonna go ahead and move this drawing to about the middle of my reference lines okay so we'll start from here and we're gonna simply start tracing this drawing now it's a good idea when you're creating a form between multiple horizontal profiles that the profiles have the same amount of sides and we'll we'll see what we run into when they don't but for now we're just gonna go ahead and use this as a template and trace it so I'm going to start by creating some model lines. And to turn off my snaps while I'm drawing, I can use the shortcut SO, which disables the snaps. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just draw straight lines, okay, for now. So I'm going to draw the straight lines. So we're going to be tracing these plans with straight lines and we're going to be filleting arcs between the straight lines. And notice it's a little easier for me to draw because chain is turned off right now. So it's just drawing one line at a time. Okay, now one of the nice things about drawing in Revit is that the fillet is a real-time fillet. Meaning I don't have to know my fillet radius. Okay, I can simply choose fillet from the ribbon, fillet arc, pick a line, pick another line, and then the fillet is interactive. So I can zoom in and set that. And I'm going to do that for each one of these. Okay, and I'm forming a closed shape or a closed profile. So there we have our first profile. So we're not going to draw all of these levels shown. We're going to draw this level one. The next one we're going to draw is this level two here. So in 3D, I need to set up the rest of these levels one at 5 meters, one at 14, one at 22, and one at 30. So I'm going to go to my 3D view. And I'm just going to shift control, drag, 
a bunch of these levels up. So I have a total of five of these. Okay, now let's set the heights of these levels. So this level two is going to be five meters. Level three is going to be 14. Level four is going to be 22. And level five is going to be 30. Okay, so now we have those set up. So let's go back to level one. So we're gonna draw all of our profiles in the level one view, but we're gonna make sure when we draw that we're setting our placement plane. So for instance, the next profile I will draw will be on level two. Okay, but we need to first set up our image so that we can trace this level two. So I'm gonna select the image and just drag it on over. And then I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to actually use my up, down, side to side arrow keys to line this up. Okay, so I'm going to get that lined up like so, and I'm going to trace this level. Again, using model lines, making sure now level two is set. Pretty much each time I click, I got to use my snap overrides to be SO. So I'm just using straight line segments for now. And then I'm going to fill it in between them. Okay, so there's level two. Now I'm gonna move my level three image over. And again, just lining this up with the arrow keys. Okay, draw on level three's profile. That should be on placement plane level three. Go ahead and start to draw this. And I imagine that each profile would be getting smaller and smaller as it moves up the tower. And then toward the top, it gets larger. So these are the smaller profiles. So I'll go ahead and fill it this. So that's level three, two more to go. So next one's gonna be level four. Okay, trace this one, clicking on model, model line, picking the placement plane is level four. SO to, for my snap overrides. Fill it between these. Okay. 
Okay, and my final profile, which will be level 5. Scoot this image over. We'll line this up with the arrow keys. And we'll draw level 5. And last but not least, but fill it in between these. Okay, so let's take a look at this in 3D. And you see that when I drew my level 5 profile, I did not set the placement plane to level 5. I'm kind of glad I did this because it shows us how to fix it. So I'm going to select level 5's profile and here in the ribbon I'm going to change the host from level 4 to level 5. Okay. So these were drawn with model lines and for right now they're all hosted to these work planes. So if these work planes were to change, for instance, if this was to change to 46 the profile would change with it. If this one was to change to 30, the profile would raise with it. Now, that's fine for now, but once I change this, or once I create the form, these model lines will disappear, and nothing will be referenced to the work planes. But that's okay, because to make this model, we're going to want to sculpt it. We're going to use X-ray, and we're going to want to access the points and the profiles. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it as model lines. So we're going to select these model lines. And we're going to click on create form. And here we have our form and we're going to kind of orbit around this and take a good look at it and see that there's some issues. Okay, and I'm looking at these flow line so to speak converging to one point here when they're coming off of two separate lines so we're gonna have to edit that profile to add a, a point there and I don't really see this tapering inward so nicely like it does in the images so we're gonna change this and sculpt this a little bit so let's start with this area here where we actually have to add a point. So what I can do is I can control Z back to before I created the form and I can take this profile and I can use a split element on it. So I'm going to click here, split the element and it doesn't really matter where but that changes it from one line segment to two line segments. So now when I select these profiles and I hit create form it's no longer coming to one single point anymore so wherever you have that in your model you can use the split element on the profile so I have another oh, I have another area right here where these are coming to one point so I need to split that edge so I can Control Z before the create form. I can use my split element and I'm going to add one in here. And then again, I'm going to select these and choose create form. Okay, so now those are no longer coming to one point. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this in x-ray mode because we're going to scale in and scale out some of the profiles just to make this more shapely. So I can select any part of this form 
and I can click on x-ray from the ribbon and there we see all of our profiles and we have all of our points as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor over one of the bottom edges and I'm gonna tab until the entire bottom profile is highlighted and now I'm gonna use my scale numerical and I'm gonna scale this out 1.2 120% roughly enter and now it wants a point to scale from and I'm gonna snap to that very bottom point and I'm gonna use my tab key until that point is highlighted now I have the point the point becomes bigger it turns blue it has a magenta X through it and I'm gonna click on that okay so now we see that spreading out giving it more shape another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale in this profile here okay so I'm tabbing and finding that hitting the resize numerical let's get let's scale it in 0.85 hit enter find that point using the tab key and click that and there we see that scale in. and now we're getting uh, a much better shape something that more resembles the built form okay and the last thing I want to show is how to kind of massage these points around so you see we have these two points that are really close to one another in the back where I made the split in that profile so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those apart so I'm gonna select that point and I'm gonna do it from a 3d top view because it's important that I stay along that profile when I move it so again just spreading those out staying on the profile as much as possible so I don't get a kink in it so there you go and I could probably go a little further now I have a nice arrow that I can drag on okay so I moved it much further away from that line or that edge and the other place that I split that was right here so same thing I can go to a top view drag that along okay so splitting those apart okay I'm gonna turn off my x-ray okay and there it is our form